Hey, 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 uh, Jordan, how you doing? Glad to have you here. Poisonly with the follow five minutes ago. I don't even think I was live five minutes ago, so, uh, just so happened. Thank you, thank you. So going to do a burn stream to celebrate the top eight? Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> um, maybe one day, maybe when we've run out of all the blue decks in the world, we might play a uh, burn. But uh, right now, we're gonna we're gonna stay far far away from burn. In fact, we're probably playing a deck that's a little uh, soft to burn, which might be uh, a mistake after the uh, the top eight. Showing, right? You just love jamming blue where it doesn't belong. You know it. You absolutely. That's, that's, I think that's the perfect description of me, actually. Love jamming blue where it doesn't belong. 100%. 100%. But in my eyes, it just like belongs everywhere. Every deck needs to be a blue deck. What's funny is, like, I love playing blue decks, but I absolutely hate the blue mirror. It's just, like, the worst experience to me. If you guys haven't noticed, the chat box looks a little bit, uh, a little bit better over there in the, uh, in the top right of your, uh, video screen. Hopefully it, uh, stays looking decent. So what we have in front of us here is a uh, four color death shadow. This was a list that uh, became pretty popular back in February in the modern pro tour um, where I think I got some pretty solid finishes. It hasn't seen much play since, but it's a deck I always love jamming. Uh, I don't think I have like gotten, um, I don't think I haven't cashed a league with this list. So I've played it through a few leagues way back a couple months ago and I like cashed every single one of them ooh what is that flank attack 27 with the follow I think that's you um Richard thanks so much for the follow really appreciate it glad to have you here I'm gonna turn my volume down on my screen here thank you thank you awesome awesome glad to have you here yeah, so we were talking about um, Four Color Death Shadow, and it was pretty popular way back when. It's it's a list that's always been consistently strong for me. I'm not sure how it uh, lines up with, like, humans, especially with a Militia Bugler. The fact is, like, the way to be humans was one for one them, but now they have, like, Militia Bugler that, you know, two for ones, and then they have Reflector Mages still, and, and things get pretty pretty wacky. So I don't know how this, this list, like, lines up right now, honestly. But we're going to try our best. Try to cheese some people out with like an early Death Shadow and Dismembers and Teamer Battle Rages and all that good stuff. Plus, we still got the power of Stubborn Nile. So that's what I really like about this list. We get the power of um, the Death Shadow core, but we have access to Stubborn Nile, Teamer Battle Rage, as well as Traverse the Ulvenwald as like increased threat density. Because sometimes I feel like the issue with the Death Shadow is that it just doesn't have enough um, like Grixia Shadow. You don't have enough threat density. Sometimes you have to keep hands without a threat, and then you dig like for the first half of the game for a threat. Uh, and then you get to like the late half of the game and it's just like it's too late. You're already too far behind and you really need a threat. So that's what uh That's what I like about the Traverse Engine. Obviously we're a bit more um weak to um what's it called? Graveyard hate. So Grixia Shadow still is weak to graveyard hate, but now we have both Traverse and Goyf as our like graveyard uh uh cards and it's just things become a little bit tricky. Um, when you make a whole deck that just revolves around this kind of graveyard synergy, but I don't know. I think I think we'll do fine. No Infernal Reckoning, best cyborg tech. Yeah, uh, what I like about Death Shadow uh, is like uh, Ceremonious Rejection just feels a bit more applicable, mostly because you just are a tempo deck and you want to fight things on the stack rather than them having resolved already. Um, like I don't know. I just feel like Ceremonious Rejection is a little more uh, useful than Infernal Reckoning, but maybe I just haven't played with Infernal Reckoning enough. Um, this is also mostly a net deck with a few changes here and there, so um, I don't know if I'm like quite ready to change things around uh, quite yet. It's been a while since I played this list. I don't think I'm ready to like uh, 
start brewing yet. But for all you over at YouTube, uh, thank you, thank you so much um, for uh, uh, watching the video here. We're playing Four Color Death Shadow. Let's go over the deck again really quickly. It goes rolls around Death Shadow, dealing yourself life with your uh, fetch lands. You have cards like Thought Seize and Street Wraith to deal you damage as well, as well as Dismember. You have Traverse the Ulvenwald, which lets you find cards like Death Shadow, Grim Flayer, and uh, Tarmogoyf. Uh, and you have Mr. Bobble here as an artifact to help that uh, be a bit more reasonable to cast. You have Stubborn Denial as well to help you fight things on the stack. Uh, whether that's removal or uh, other interactive or not interactive things from your opponent. And then you have a Liliana as well. You have an Abrupt Decay. You have four Fatal Pushes because it's a premier black removal spell. Got a lot of good things going on here, right? And then a, a nice nice sideboard here to pull things together. You have a couple like value finds with uh, Traverse, like Snapcaster and Hostage Taker. Uh, you have Liliana the Last Hope, which is a wonderful, wonderful grindy planeswalker. You have two Collective Brutality. Um, it's kind of just disruption, removal, life gain, even, you know, you know, sometimes you want that life gain or that drain effect. You have two Ancient Grudge because it's great to be able to interact with Affinity and Hollow One and KCI and Tron with artifacts that have already resolved. Three Ceremonies Rejection, similar idea, you want to be able to fight all the colorless, colorless decks that are running around right now. Uh, one extra Stubborn Denial to fight things on the stack. An extra Team or Battle Rage because sometimes you just need to have that Battle Rage to have that fast clock. And then a Maelstrom Pulse to kill, you know, uh, big things or non-land permanents or just like Lingering Souls tokens. And then Kozlok's Return similarly uh, helps uh, against go wide decks as well as Affinity. Dirty Net Decker, you know it, Jordan. That is, uh, when, when I am not brewing, I am the most dirtiest of Net Deckers out there. I honestly considered playing like Greenwood Emeria for today's stream, but I was like, I need to like build a, a slightly better following before I start, you know, uh, uh, brewing away, you know. Uh, so we're gonna stick with a deck that's like relatively established before we uh, start freaking people out. Um, but this is the deck we're playing here today. Hope uh, hope you enjoy it, and let's go ahead and jump into a uh, to a modern competitive league. It's very bad with shadow, kind of a joke. Oh, <laughs> right, because you gain life with Infernal Reckoning, right? Yeah, that's. You know, sometimes I, f I I honestly forget that last piece of text on Infernal Reckoning. I thought it was just like exile target colorless creature or whatever. Oh god, I have two four colored death shadow. Tra Jeez, what did I call it? Before we before we you know burn our four colored traverse shadow. Oren, I'm Greg. Hey, Greg. How's it going, man? How are you doing tonight? Glad to have you here. Hi, hi. We're just over here playing some uh, Four Color Death Shadow with Traverse the Ulvenwald, clearly the best build of the deck. Alright, we're on the draw, we've already lost, clearly. This hand is very land heavy. Um, we have Inquisition, we have Stubborn Nile, those are instant. Sorcery, land, that's three. I'm actually going to mulligan this hand. It's not that good. This hand is actually significantly better. We'll go ahead and keep it. Hey there. Happy to catch some of the stream before the weekend is over. Yeah, hey, thank you, MT80. Glad to have you here before the stream is over, or before the weekend is over. Mole, you don't have threats? Yeah, absolutely. Looks like we might be up against uh, Ponza here. So we have a couple options. Against Ponza, because we don't have the removal spell for the Arbor Elf, land on top, keep. Yeah, hey, Greg. <laughs> you think, uh, think I don't know how to play this deck? Oh, boy. Got, got a backseat, uh, backseat, what's it called? Backseat gamer over here, backseat player. No, I'm just kidding. Um, generally, Ponza has, like, 
uh, can have multiple turn three uh, things. So there is an argument here to just keeping up um, ceremonious rejection for their like blood moon or molten rain or stone rain or whatever. We could get punished if they go like Utopia Sprawl uh, into what's the word I'm looking Utopia Sprawl into like Bloodbraid Elf. That would be kind of rough. Just helping out, but yeah, I know, Greg. I'm I'm just messing with you. Glad glad to have you uh, talking talking to that with me. I think we want to cycle before we do anything. If we draw the Fatal Push, life becomes a little bit easier. Bam. Skill game. And now we can have the Inquisition plus the Watery Grave next turn. Alright, so... Things working out for us. Relatively well. Another Inquisition. Shh, let's lead on... One Inquisition. Alright, looks like my opponent's hand is quite poor. They don't even have land number three. So if we can land this Goyf, we'll be in a really nice spot. Ideally, we want our opponent to miss some land drops. <laughs> our opponent just concedes. All right. All right. This happened last night, too. We're just like uh, round one. Our opponent just conceded really early before we even had a threat or anything going on. So our opponent doesn't even know what deck we're necessarily on. Liliana's going to tear his hand apart. We don't even need to cast Liliana because we're just that good at playing magic. So the other Stubborn Denial is reasonable to bring in. Liliana is also reasonable, although on the draw she's a little slow. Not quite a Snapcaster Mage matchup. Hostage Taker does steal things like Bloodbraid Elf, things like Stormbreath Dragon, and Maelstrom Pulse kills certain cards. Team or Battle Rage helps us speed up the clock. I blame Hoogland for telling people to concede early. Yeah, I mean, um, he does he does do that quite often, doesn't he? All right, and this I feel like most of our deck is already really well built to uh, beat our opponent here. I like Cozy Return this matchup a lot. I know others might not agree, but getting rid of mana elves is really important. Also gets Tracker on turn three. Um, yeah, like Cozy Return is reasonable. My issue is like, what am I cutting though? You know. I feel like almost everything we have in the deck is just just already imp like too important. Like we want our full set of eight discard spells. We want some number of stubborn denial still. We could trim like Grim Flayer. For like a pulse. Grimflayer dies to bolt, they might keep some of those in. Like honestly, I don't I don't actually think we need any of these cards. Might be a little greedy, but Honestly, I think our deck is pretty reasonably positioned. They might um shift into like being a bunch of playing a bunch of creatures. In which case Thumber Denial does not go go down another stub, you just want to get on board. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. I think that's a totally reasonable thing to do. And bottoming a land is like kind of sketchy against uh, Ponza. All right, here comes the Utopia Sprawl. Yep. All right, we definitely need a discard spell here. All right, that's a discard spell. The question is, are we getting basic swamp? Another dismember. Well. 
I think I do want to get basic swamp here. Just insulates, insulates us against a future blood moon. A blood moon, molten rain, roast. Alright, well. I kind of want to take the molten rain. At the same time, blood moon shuts us off pretty hard. I think I should have kept the land on top now that I think about it. I actually think taking Blood Moon is correct here. It's kind of awkward. I fetched the basic swamp, but. I'm just going to Molten Rain us a bit here. Yep. Moon, he can play it next turn. He can play Molten Rain next turn, too, because he named uh, Utopia Sprawl on red. I guess I'll shock. Leave up Dismember. I kind of like the Dismember kill Stormbreath Dragon. Doesn't kill Inferno Titan, though. Uh oh. They're doing it. Yep. They're doing the thing their deck does. Oh, is I sub. Ah, floating mana. That's probably not, like, relevant. I just top deck some lands. That's all we need to do, right? Easy, easy game. I kind of want to kill the Arbor Elf just because I don't want them generating too much mana next turn. They'll have six mana available. That gives them way more top decks. This roast in their hand is not really doing much. Birds of Paradise. Is that a card I want to dismember? Well, that makes that decision easier. We'll play some magic here. I don't want to get my life total down too low. GG, you beat me to it. Uh, plan, play threat early, hide it, uh, ride it to victory, at least in game three. Too much better top end for from Ponza. Yeah, that's, that's very true. All right, we know they're drawing a Utopia Sprawl next turn, which is... Decent info. We'll go ahead and uh, on their draw step, kill the courser just so we get a little bit more information on the next card in their deck. That's a stone rain. God, I hate how dismember works uh, on Magic Online sometimes. Report it to Watsi for hacking the shuffler, right? Hello, a hair Laselk. How you doing, man? Thank you for joining us here today. I think we're pretty screwed here, though. Well, speaking of screwed, that dodges roast as well. That's kind of fantastic. I think that was the perfect draw. Got it down right before Stone Rain. Had a PPDU today, my first competitive tourney. Hey, that's awesome, man. What deck did you play? What format? Talk to us. How'd it go? Modern. All right, all right. We like that format here. Hey, a hair. Well, Selk, thank you so much for following. 
Thank you, thank you. Ooh, Bloodbraid Elf. That could be pretty scary here. Depending on uh, what my opponent hits. <laughs> Utopia Sprawl, alright. Let's play a few matches one day? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Why not? Did Mono Black Devotion. Played a terrible deck. That's not like a terrible deck. I mean, it's not great. But it's not terrible. It's like a deck, right? Uh, my opponent can't attack here. They'll put us down. Opponent, what are you doing? Opponent, come on. Easy game, easy game. Uh, opponent, I think our opponent's about to shame concede. <laughs> oh no, oh no, opponent. That didn't that didn't do what you thought it might do. Yeah, Mono Black Devotion's not like a terrible deck. It's definitely not like, you know, tier 1, tier 2, tier 3, etc. But it's like fringe playable. I won a few games, so it wasn't awful. Hey, I mean, you gotta start somewhere. Your first competitive event is usually not gonna, uh, not gonna go as well as you maybe have it planned in your head. But that experience stacks up over time. I think my first competitive event was the uh, Star City Games Open back in like 2015. At least for modern. Maybe it was even 2014, I can't even remember. Uh, point was that I uh, just barely squeaked out with like a positive record with like a 5-4 in day one and you know sometimes you just gotta learn the hard way how to win and lose uh oh opponent yeah right <laughs> the new england meta is all mardu pyro dude i love mardu pyro mardu pyro mancer is the best deck in modern oh hey i'm in new england and play mardu pyro <laughs> hey uh hey dork how you doing man glad to have you here man no threat but a solid amount of disruption. I think this is one of those hands where I'm actually going to keep. Like, if this was like a fourth land, I would definitely maul. But three lands, I think we can get there here. Out of 56 entries, 26 were Mardu Pyromancer. That's insane. That that, that was uh, 2014, Jordan. You remember that, uh, that event? The first uh, modern STG Open. Was that uh, 2014? Can't even remember. Alright, I imagine my opponent might take the Traverse. It's the only thing that ends up finding us a threat eventually. That's a few too many. Agreed. That is an insane number. They might take the Inquisition or the Stubborn Denial, depending on what uh, what they think we're doing here. Well, I remember that's when you started playing Comp Ariel. Yeah, yeah. It was, it's been a while. It has been a while. Wow. Opponents on the Hardcore Mistress Bobble Plan. Fatal push. Uh, I guess we'll save the fetch for that reason, in case we want to trigger revolt. All right, looks like this is like Grixis Shadow. Whoa! What did I take? No. I was just trying to move the the hand screen over. I did not mean to take that. Teamer Moon and Sultime Midrange made the first top eight of the SCG Open. Was that uh I do remember Sultime Midrange. I remember uh, Gerard Fabiano. I also remember uh Jonathan Sukanic on the four color control with Lingering Souls. That was a super sweet deck. I guess like th taking Thought Scour is not the worst thing in the world, right? I don't know, it feels pretty bad. Now they just rip apart our hand. My budget hurt me a bit too. I was running extirpate over surgicals and relic of genesis as opposed to ley lines. Yeah, ley lines and mono black devotion seems like probably the the right the right one to play, right? Extirpate over surgical. I don't think that's always that bad, but I do I do agree that head judge call cost me my game and I dropped after. Oh no! What happened? What happened? Interesting main phase thought scour. I guess that makes sense because they left us with stubborn denial in our hand All right, they played the uh, scalding tarn. They played the inquisition we drew a land And now we just have to hope our opponent doesn't have like a death shadow here because what they can do is they can thought seize away our fatal push 
Or a Gourmet Gangler. Gourmet Gangler would probably be even worse to see here. Although, if we land a Tarmogoyf... Oh, wow. They, uh... They thought scoured us? And they hit two Tarmogoyfs. Now, why would they do that? Surgical is gas with snap, free spell, and life control. Yeah, it is. It is It is pretty good. I guess they thought scour us. Maybe they knew it was on top of their deck with Mishra's Bobble. I'm very confused. I get attacked by Bedlam Reveler while I have Dreadshade out. I pump the Dreadshade to block. All right. Continue. I'm listening. I'm with you so far. Kind of want to fetch shock here just to get a land out of my deck. I don't know how relevant that actually is. If we should be saving our fetches for like Mishra's Bobble, but we have more fetches in our hand, so. Rip. So this gets Breeding Pool. I think I think Bloodstained Mire is the worst land in our hand, but at the same time, we don't want to maybe play another card that they already know about. That is how Grixis beats Tarmog. Opponent bolts Dreadshade in response to the pump and thinks it kills my guy. Oh, wow. Interesting. That's an interesting judge call. Add a PPTQ, you get to like take, seize, take back seize. That seems kind of... I don't know. Dilly G. Who who is this Dilly G guy and why is he in my stream? I'm very upset right now. That really sounds like it shouldn't happen at Comp Ariel. Yeah, I agree. That's that's sketch. That is sketchy. See so our opponent scries two to the bottom. Great for us to see here. Oh, you were playing blue green infect? Wow. Look at you branching out. Should we be like fatal pushing this snap? I don't know. That seems kind of loose to me. Infect underrated. Never played deck before in my life. Was supposed to play humans, but friend forgot to bring it. Rough. Rough. Yeah, Blue Green Effect, we played against that last night. It's a pretty sweet deck. Can just, uh, can, uh, can win out of nowhere. Weren't you the one that made fun of me for having Infect built in paper, Dylan? So I'm not wrong, right? The Bolt should just fizzle. It shouldn't fizzle, but you shouldn't get take backs. Yeah, I don't think you should get take backs there. Double Death Shadow. Oh boy. Well, I'm glad I saved the Fatal Push. Am I just hard casting Street Wraith here? Nah. All right. Well, we're not dead here. But we wouldn't mind drawing a couple less lands. I think I'm going to start um, fetching these to uh, get some untapped or, or tapped sources. Probably get a blood crypt out here. I guess maybe we should have gotten the traverse. Jeez. Come on, deck. All right, well, you flood sometimes. You flood every now and again. I understand being nice to a younger player who's still in the game, but Comp Ariel is... All right, we're dead. All right, Grixis Shadow. 
In this matchup, you want to be grindy, but you also want to be interactive. All these cards seem pretty great. Liliana seems great. We can consider the extra stub. Don't think I want Teamer Battle Rages here. We can get blown out a little bit too easily. Uh, threat Density is important. Abrupt Decay still hits Shadow and dodges Stubborn Denial. I don't know if we want the extra fourth stub in the mirror. You should know the game. Oh boy. Drama going on in chat. I'll try to catch up after sideboarding with you guys. Maybe we want to trim some discard, treat it like a Jund mirror in some ways. I think we definitely want this removal, definitely want that. Do you trim some number of Street Wraiths in the mirror? I don't think so. I think Street Wraith is really important for Traverse. Maybe we trim like a Stub and like one Inquisition, bring like Liliana Snapcaster. I have no idea if I'm sideboarding correctly, but uh, yeah, let's let's just run it. All right, this hand is fine. Play the bobble. Um, we could target ourselves with Mishra's bobble here. And kind of get a little scry going on, but I think uh, we're going to be casting one of these discard spells no matter what we do this turn. So there's really no reason. We can Mishra's Bobble at the beginning of our opponent's uh, upkeep. And get a little bit more information on their hand, and then... Oof. That's a threat dense hand, huh? We could take the Snapcaster Mage as the most value oriented card. Could take a Death Shadow. I think it's probably one of those two. They have double Death Shadow. I kind of like just taking the Snapcaster Mage here. Get a little more more information on what card they're drawing. They're drawing a Blood Crypt. Which is pretty good for us. Long story retip on my phone. Yeah, 13 year old legacy players coming in here to our format getting the unfair calls. <laughs> sure, that's, that's one way to look at it, right? Hmm, no land. So, what we're going to do here, I think, is go traverse. Get a basic swamp. Thought sees our opponent. Wow, opponent didn't. Oh, I guess they kept Thought sees on top. That's totally fair. I kind of want to take the Fatal Push. And then they'll Thought sees. They'll take away our Tarmogoyf, probably. But I think that's fine. Alternatively, I could have taken Thoughtseize. It slows down the way they uh, deal life to themselves, deal damage to themselves. But I think they'll just be forced to take this Tarmogoyf unless they... Oh, they take Liliana. I guess that's fair. Hopefully our opponent didn't rip another um, removal spell. That would be really bad for us. I think we may have chatted before in another channel. Oh no. Yeah, that was that was a really good draw for my opponent. Yep. So maybe I'm just supposed to take the thought seas and find a land for Liliana, but I don't I don't know. Either way, this doesn't end good for me. Well,
going to get a breeding pool here, I think. You get to find a uh, Tarmogoyf. And play it. Hope our opponent doesn't keep drawing removal spells. It's not like Mardu Pyro is super complex. Oh, I disagree. I think Mardu Pyro is probably a, one of the more difficult decks to play in uh, in modern right now. See how our opponent scries here. Two to the bottom. Always good to see. Oh god, they drew another fatal push. Come on. I guess we can hold the land for uh K command. I guess that's true of Dork, right? If if KCI is your comparison, then then every deck in modern is easy. I think I'm just gonna take a couple more beats from Snapcaster Mage before I pull the trigger. We know they're sitting on two Death Shadow in hand. We're gonna wanna kill those Death Shadows. Jeez, our opponent has drawn Fatal Push, Snapcaster, Serum Visions. God, well. This is gonna put us in a really rough spot. Do I wanna just blow my removal spells here? Then they play Death Shadow, it's a 9, it's a 4-4, four, four. we'll be at 6. Amulet Titan is also very hard to play optimally, agreed, agreed. And I don't know if Ancient Stern is going to get banned. As much as I hate, you know, those artifact combo decks. Yeah, I think we're dead here. Well, speaking of not being dead, well, our opponent knows our ex the exact contents of our hand here. All right, well played, opponent. Well, well played. Death Shadow Mirror. That god draw, right? <laughs> nah, I mean, like, if you think about it, they had very few dead draws in their deck. Um, a fetch land would have killed us. Um, a Snapcaster, I don't know if it would have killed us, but it would have been a fine draw. A Cantrip is a fine draw. Like, literally everything in their deck is very good at, at in the position they were at, so I don't think we can be too salty about that. I mean, not really only out, right? They have Stubborn Denial. They have Snapcaster Mage. They also did some scrying uh, without fetching there towards the end game, so again, they were they were playing they were playing pretty well. Leaving themselves live to good draws. I mean, that pulse, oh yeah, that pulse was my only out, for sure. For sure. <laughs> Alright, it looks like we're up against Storm here. This is going to be a matchup where Stubborn, having access to Stubborn Isle is going to be really nice. Perfect, perfect draw. <laughs> you want to match up with me? Oh boy. Uh, we probably want to take the Pyretic Ritual here. We can kill the Baral with Fatal Push.
Alternatively, we could just take the Baral. I kind of like taking the Pyretic Ritual, actually. It kind of telegraphs that we have the Fatal Push. Just a little bit. <laughs> victim of ghosting confirmed, absolutely. I'm always the victim of ghosting. Did we just play double death shadow here? Yeah, why not? Let's get the clock going. I guess they can play Baral here and kind of go off. Alright, well they don't want to play Baral, so... I guess that's better for us. Kind of want to get some more information on what my opponent might have. They've got what? What one unknown card in hand? Maybe the, they also have this. Uh, they have two unknown cards. We could go for the kill here. Right, they're drawing a goblin electromancer. Kind of like just going for it here. Bam. They're pretty. They're they're pretty forced into getting in, uh, getting brawl out when they want to combo, or if you don't win on on following, bruh, bruh. Oh my god! Did my opponent concede the match? Oh no! Oh my god! My opponent disconnected. What's happening here? That was strong. It was strong. I think I need to reset Moto here, though. Opponent disconnected, and I'm out of the game, so. It bro <laughs> that's, what it, that's what it seemed like, right? Yeah, if they concede a match, it just wouldn't file for comp. I mean, I don't think I need to file for comp, right? I don't. I think I'll be able to get back in. I beat two Death Shadow matchups today, so I was happy with that. Yeah, I think uh, Mono Black Devotion, like the grindy decks in the format, have a pretty good uh, matchup against uh, against Death Shadow. I think my opponent just straight up uh, conceded the match. <laughs> that was <laughs> that was just rage quit. All right, fair enough. This might be a quick league. Oren, I love your mic now. Thank you, Dylan. Yeah, it only cost a grand total of fifty dollars. I thought that was actually pretty cheap. It seems like a high quality mic. It's the uh, Blue Snowball, I believe, is the name of it. It's pretty nice. It's convenient. It's useful. Um, Easy to use. Doesn't get all up in my face. That glitch is weird. I don't know why it happens when you win hard. It's the MG equivalent of dunking so hard you shadow the backboard. Yeah, right? <laughs> when you play Storm, you should not be rage quitting. I don't know, man. I think uh, I've gotten to the point in modern where it's just like I don't think any deck is like particularly degenerate. So I don't, you know, if someone wants to get salty when they're playing Storm, like, it's all, it's up to them. League matchmaking failed. Last FNM, I hit two Death Shadow in a row. I had a fun win. They put themselves to, trap, to seven to try and close quick, and I went K-Command, untap. K-Command, Bolt for the kill. 
Yeah, it's always tricky playing with Death Shadow against like red decks. How you're supposed to seek like sequence, taking damage. Sometimes you just can't play around things, but I think that that does make the game uh, pretty interesting. Uh, here we have some removal. We have some deck manipulation. Ooh, we're up against Mardu Pyro, probably. Maybe Jund. Dun Jund did just like win a uh, an open. What's our worst land here right now? I think it's Bloodstained Mire. Probably want to use the worst fetch land first. I mean that as a storm player deck either works or it doesn't and anyway why rage quit in general I agree what uh, what did we reveal Tarmogoyf I kind of want to draw Tarmogoyf so I'll go ahead and leave that on top we have your dis alright so it is Jund Question is, are they keeping up Bolt or Fatal Push here? And should I be Fetch Shocking or Fetch... I don't know. Let's just go ahead and... Uh, another Tarmogoyf. Let's just go ahead and run out of Tarmogoyf then, right? If they have the Fatal Push, they got the Fatal Push. You got me, opponent. You got me. But this Tarmogoyf doesn't die to Bolt, so... That's all I care about. Ah, they have the push. Have the push. What is your least favorite fetch land? That is a that is a good question. My least favorite fetch land. Oh boy. That's uh probably marsh flats. I think marsh flats is like my least favorite fetch land. Thankfully, we have this abrupt decay. I'm not sure I want to deploy uh, Death Shadow right now. Dies to a lot of things. Of course, this leaves me open to. Uh... Alright, Bloodberry Elf, sure. Tarmogoyf, oh boy. By turn four, he had. Oh man, am I missing like a whole story here? Could be Hollow One. Yeah, that's true. That 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 is very true. It could have been Hollow One here. Um. I'm worried if like Inquisition and he's just sitting on another Bloodbraid Elf. But at the same time, can I reasonably play like Tarmogoyf and keep up Stubborn Denial? They have another land, so that's good for us. And they're not uh, firing up Raging Ravine, so that's also good for us. And no attacks. Kind of don't want to use Thoughtseize here. I think I just want to lead on Inquisition. See what my opponent is sitting on. They want to, like, bolt my face. I think I say okay. Yep. Oh, they have double bolt? Yeah, I'm gonna stub that one. Don't really want to put myself to two life, dead to K command. Obviously I can hold up stub, but I don't really want to hold up stub for like the rest of the game. Now we just need like one removal spell and this game is ours. Saw an 8-rack deck do some serious work today. 8-rack is, uh, is a pretty sweet deck. Not going to lie about that.
My opponent wants to attack here. That would be interesting. Could swing. Ooh. Ooh. Oh boy. K command? Yeah, make me discard. Get back Bloodbraid Elf. Oh boy. That's kind of gross. Well. Let's go ahead and swing in here. Put my opponent down to 11. Play the Tarmogoyf. Alright, now we just want to hope that Bloodbird Elf does not hit Maelstrom Pulse. <laughs> Inquisition, yeah, that's a rough hit here. The Thoughtseize is not is not the greatest rip for us. So they could actually double block. If I swing all, no, swing all is, is I die, right? Although I could actually cast this. And then Death Shadow doesn't die. Oh my god, I'm what am I doing? Oh my god, that was so bad. Because now I can't actually attack. Because that's not a lethal attack, and they still have Raging Ravine to fire up. So now I'm just dead to a removal spell. Although I guess now they're also in a rough spot. <laughs> well, um, I thought sees them, it forces a chump lock. All right, now because this is a lethal attack, I think this is fine. All right. If I attack with everything, no, that's still dead. Yeah. So this is fine. Because they have to block here with something. Want to block with a ravine? Sure. All right, opponent could have a lot of uh, a lot of good rips here. Bolt kills us. Another blood raid elf kills us. Colgan's command kills us. Liliana does not kill us. We could just sack the Death Shadow. Alright, Bob. Bob is in. See if we can draw something good here. That's uh that's pretty good. Again, put them in the abyss a bit longer. Get another Death Shadow. And let's see what Bob flips for them. Scavenging Ooze. God, I don't know what's going on in chat right now. Got to see it. Um, smallpox against the Bogles player. Made him Insta Scoop. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. And my opponent just gets the K command. Puts us dead. Fair enough. Fair enough, opponent. Didn't really see any removal that game. Kind of sucks. All right, removal matchups. I really don't like Teamer Battle Rage against Jund. I also don't like Inquisition of Kozilek that much. I mean, I think we can trim like three copies. I think we want Snap, Hostage Taker, Maelstrom Pulse, Liliana. Maybe we can keep in two of the Inquisitions. Chat is too active, better start the timeouts, right? I don't even have a mod, you know? 
I need, I need someone else doing that for me, but I have no idea how to actually mod. Not a clue. Stubborn and out good post board? I don't know. I think it's okay. I think it I think it counters some relevant things in the matchup. Milstrom Pole, Siliana, K Command. Yeah, this uh, this hand has a good mix of everything we really want. Got some removal, got some top end, got some disruption, card draw, abrupt decay. Do we want the abrupt decay? I think I do. Oh my god, I think I do want the abrupt decay, and in classic fashion, I play the fetch land. Goif, spell bomb, fatal push. Kind of want to take the fatal push. Spell bomb is annoying though. Top eight was all different decks. Only one of the martyr players made it. Infect top eighted. Yeah, was happy to see. It's it's nice when you have like diverse top eights for sure. I think I kind of want to take the spell bomb. Seems like the most annoying card for us to have to deal with down the road. We can trade some one for ones. Alright, fetch land's not the worst. It builds us towards hostage taker. Alright, well, we got some lands. Cheerios is very fringe nowadays. Yeah, it's pretty fringe. I've seen a couple people still on it though. Actually, my opponent's not running out their goif. I guess that's fine with me. But this is where we uh, go ahead and flood out, right? KCI is seriously just nuts. Yeah, it's a pretty, it's a pretty powerful deck. Again, this is a moment where I wish I'd actually had the Abrupt Decay still. Because now we're going to get Liliana Fulminator Mage. Sure. I guess that's not the worst. Yeah. All right, that's a goif. Um, so I think right now we're, we're okay to start deploying threats. Overgrown tomb. Uh, let's get a watery grave. Let's shock for this blood crypt. Let's just deploy everything now. Opponent does not have a convenient time to use the removal spell, although they could have gotten multiple removal spells going here. I misunderstood Extirpate too, thinking it would help. Damn man abilities. Yeah. Sure. All right, double removal spell. Fair enough. Wow, Liliana, the last hope. Wow, that is that is really good here. I think I just get a basic swamp. Get back, ya boy. Oh no, do they have another fatal push in hand? Alright, no fatal push. So right now we can tussle with this raging ravine, which is nice. Alright, here comes one of the goifs, I imagine. Yep. And a maelstrom pulse. Rough.
I don't really want a hostage taker here. Let's see, I could dismember this right now. I want to kind of want to see what my opponent does on their turn. It's my boy, yeah. Hey, you reek head all. Thank you so much for that follow. Glad to have you here. Sure. So how many follows needed to turn this into a 24 hour stream? I, I don't think uh, that that's quite an option. Oh, they have Treetop Village. Interesting. So this kind of makes me want to just cash that in. Get back Death Shadow. Turn this game into top deck mode. Where we have a Liliana and a Death Shadow in play. Made our opponent discard a fatal push? Yeah. Now we just hope our opponent doesn't rip a bunch of removal spells off the top. Sweet. They just ripped a treetop village. Or a uh, wooded foothills. Oh, now that is a fantastic draw. Guess I'll go ahead and attack here. Let's go ahead and uptick. Say go. That Liliana did a lot of work. Bought us back. Uh, it was like a three for one, basically, right? No, nah, just a two for one. Whatever. Three for one. Something like that. We'll call it a three for one. We'll be happy. Ben has a Liliana of their own. Fulminator Mage. That is not very good here. Stubborn Denial. This stops my opponent from double blocking. And we kind of want to hold this uh, Stubborn Denial as well. Well, never mind. I didn't want to uh, play the Stubborn Denial anyways. Yeah, I don't I don't know if we're quite big enough for a 24 hour stream, right? <laughs> 24 hour stream with like 13 viewers the whole time. That seems uh seems sketchy. I will right, we'll draw the death shadow. Bonus just like dead here. I don't think they have a single draw. I guess no, not not even like Blood Raid Elf gets them there. I mean I guess that's a start. Your boy Bob. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't quite do it either. They can go after the Lily, but we'll have two lethal threats. If they don't go after the Lily, we down tick Lily, and they're dead. All right, looks like we got game two there. We'll take it to a game three. It's quite a grind. Again, Inquisitions in the grind, like Inquisition in your opener is fantastic. Inquisition or any time, Inquisition anytime else is really rough. Hey, uh, Jade Black Adder. Thank you so much for the follow. Glad to have you here. Hope you're enjoying the stream so far. I think this is fine. I think there's an argument to cutting like all the inquisitions for maybe even like a brutality plus a, plus a stub. But I think they're they're a little a little useful. Do I get a shout out for following? Did I not give you a shout out? 
Did you even follow? I don't see you uh, on my follow screen here, so you're definitely not getting a shout out until you follow. Okay, put a scribe to the top. Interesting. We could draw a Mishra's Bobble here, which is why I'd want to sequence it that way. And we might want to power out this um, Death Shadow reasonably quickly. So let's go ahead and use our Fetch Land right now. Nice. Nice. Our opponent has a solid hand. I think we just take the K command. Most powerful card in my opponent's hand currently. Blackleaf Cliffs. Bob. Kind of just want to run out Death Shadow here, too. If my opponent wants to take their whole turn to decay it, we can land a Liliana of the Veil and then just start going up. Another Bob. Okay. Well, we can Lily down tick on that, and that's going to put us in a really nice spot. We got Delirium set up. We have two Traverses in hand. Our hand is fantastic at grinding. We have a Snap Fatal Push as well to deal with like a Tarmogoyf. K Command would be really strong here, I guess. If that's what my opponent has. Yeah, that's that's not the worst. Play a land. So I think they have Decay plus Bob in their hand. So I think we want to save this snap to hit the bob. Oh, <laughs> I actually missed your follow. Hey, Deathly Fiend, thank you so much for the follow, uh, aka Greg. Good, good friend of mine. You now get a shout out. Everyone likes you more than me, Richard. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh boy, we gotta, we gotta fight here. So we gotta have a fight breakout. All right, there's the Bob. We're gonna get decayed as well on the Tarmogoyf, maybe. Seems like an opportune time. Oh, they have a Goyf of their own. Interesting. Interesting. Now we have to think, what can we, can we beat our opponent in the long run? If so, we can kill, like we can kill Tarmogoyf or, and then like swing in for eight this turn. I kind of like that. If our opponent doesn't block, we're in a good position. If our opponent does block, we're also in a good position. <laughs> our opponent just doesn't block. Fair enough. All right, they got the ravine. The thing is, like, tar uh, uh, Dark Confidant is not that good when you're at five life. Yeah, all right, you you got the Nile Spellbomb. That only targets one player's graveyard, so this Tarmogoyf won't shrink completely. Kind of glad I, I at least used up the Snapcaster Mage that way. So they'll, they'll be forced to block with uh, Dark Confidant now. Probably want to chump the Death Shadow and then Abrupt Decay the Tarmogoyf. Take two is my guess. That's fine as well. I guess maybe Thoughtseize pre-combat would have prevented this from happening. 
we got an, an extra point of damage. Alright. Present two lethal threats. Our opponent only has one card in hand. What you got, opponent? It's got to be a Blood Raid Elf, probably. Oh, don't tell me. Don't tell me. No, don't do it. Hunt Master. Okay. Still got two lethal threats, though. They'll have to trump both. Then we play another Death Shadow. And they're in the Abyss. We're at a healthy 8 life. What you got for me, opponent? What you got? Sweet. Took it in three games. I'm actually surprised we ended up getting there. I've been missing a lot of what's going on in chat. Talking about KCI and how frustrating it is to play against. I agree. I think it's frustrating, but you can configure your deck in a way to beat it. I think that's always kind of like the tricky thing with like the big combo decks in the format. How do you configure your deck? Should you give up some percentage points here and there to, you know, devote sideboard slots to the more the more powerful combo decks? I think it's probably correct. Um, Marshall Arthur's, I think his name is. Um, a Mardu Pyromancer pilot, he was like stalking like three Stony Silence, three Surgicals in his sideboard for like thinking KCI was going to be really big that weekend. And he ended up getting 21st place. I don't know exactly if his list paid off or not, but you can definitely configure your fair decks in such a way to beat out the unfair decks. Of course, you're devoting those few sideboard slots that you have to doing that, but such is life. Such is the life in, in of the modern format. Our Elf, eh? All right, we drew a land. That's kind of good for us. Again, I'm going to cycle first in case we um, draw like a Mishra's Bobble. No Mishra's Bobble. Are you still playing four Ley Lines in your uh, Pyro sideboard? Yep. Haven't uh, haven't really tweaked it much, honestly, but yep, still playing, uh, still playing those four. All right, looks like we're playing against... Uh, Mono Green Devotion potentially, which we should have a reasonable matchup against. Probably would feel a little more confident if we were on the uh, play, but our opponent's going to attack. I kind of like this attack. It makes um, our Death Shadows 4-4s. Four Stubborn Denial. Wow. Okay. I could deploy double death shadow. I kind of want to play around like a Garrick here or something like that. That's what stumber denial is for. Yeah, exactly. So I think a dismember off the top here might be close to lethal. All right, no dismember. We have a couple options here. We could play Liliana Downtick. We could play Double Death Shadow, or Death Shadow plus Tarmogoyf. I kind of like that because I don't think my opponent has any particularly strong play uh, that can punish us after that. Let's go ahead and swing in for seven. Next turn we'll have Lethal with Teamer Battle Rage. KCI is better to play against than second sun right version just because scrap trial is actually infinite and you can scoop up. The other versions are, aren't deterministic. Yeah, that's for sure. Once your opponent presents the loop, it's much easier. I actually lost to uh, KCI. Um, I think it was in the last GP I played in. It was like Richmond or something. I don't even remember. Um, but yeah, I lost to it because they just presented the loop. And I was like, all right, you got it. And our, our, my life was much easier.
Was it Richmond? Was that the last GP we uh we went to? If anyone in my play group is still here watching, was that was that Richmond? I honestly can't remember. All right, Birds of Paradise, you got some blockers, buddy. don't think Richmond has happened yet this year. Interesting. Maybe Nationals was in Richmond. There was some, some modern GP in the area. Maybe it was Baltimore. I don't know. I don't know. I'm in the, I'm in like the Washington DC area. So that might give you a little more information. Uh, Liliana seems fine in this matchup. Like a lot of dorks. Same, same from Maelstrom Pulse. Kozlex return could be reasonable. Uh, they have very little interaction, so Teamer Battle Rage actually also seems very reasonable to me. It's not a Snapcaster Mage. It could be a Stubborn Denial matchup. Richmond soon or in the club is going. Jade Black Adder. Is that, is that Alex? I think you're Alex, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. The club is going. Yeah, uh, maybe I'll go too. Maybe I won't. Is that a hostage taker play hostage taker? I don't think hostage taker is actually good here. This isn't like a grindy matchup. Like we want to be very aggressive, very disruptive, very early. Hey man, how's it going? Maybe Stumber Denial is like not the best actually here, especially on the draw. Although it did it did okay there. Maybe we can cut like one traverse. Yeah, I like having all my discard in this matchup. They're they're a deck that's really easy to pick apart with just a, a piece pieces of like uh, disruption. All right, well we have removal, we have stub, we have Mistress Bobble. It's a good hand. Hopefully they don't lead on um, Utopia Sprawl because we can we don't have any interaction with that right now. But what we do have interaction for is a Mana Dork. Sponent Mulligan down to six, kept a hand. Now they're determining their scry. They scry to the bottom. Always good for us to see. It's just bobble. Let's uh, target ourselves. Definitely don't want that. Definitely don't want that. We might still hit an Inquisition or something, so let's go ahead and cycle. All right, Liliana. Fine magic card. Bam, that was uh that went better than expected. Go ahead and cycle here. I think my opponent conceded. <laughs> Oh my god. I think uh, playing at night, I don't know. I play against a lot worse decks at night. Let me just say that. Uh, like, I've consistently been getting uh, good records when we've been streaming at night, which is super surprising. But that's another 4 1 in the books with uh, 4 color Death Shadow. 
Too good, yeah, clearly. I am just... I'm a master. It's all because it's because all the Cali players are finally up. <laughs> They're finally up what at uh, what time is it over there right now? Like 7:45. Are you are you calling Cali players bad? Is that what you're uh, referring to? All right. This is the deck we played to a 4-1 finish. What did we beat? We beat Storm. We beat Mono Green Devotion. We beat Jund. What do we play against round one? What did we lose to? We lost to Grixis Shadow. That was a fun game. I have no idea what we played against round one, if anyone remembers. Um... Let's open up some chests, right? So we won eight chests there for a 4-1 finish. Let's open up like four of them. Oh, I got the Ox. The Ox Avatar. That's, uh, might change to that soon. That silly little guy. Ponza, right, we beat Ponza. Good call, good call, Greg. What a memory, what a memory. Ox is clutch, I know you like the Ox, uh, Richard, I know you do. Defense grid, is that worth anything? It's probably not worth anything. It's also one of my least favorite cards like in the world, but... Yeah, I'm an ox. Did you see what Rich Shy said about the ox? No, what did, what did, uh, what did, what did Rich Shy say about the ox? Soren Solemn Visitor. Yo, this card was a uh, standard all-star. Back when Obzon midrange was all was all the rage, he made a moto person manually go into his account to delete it. <laughs> that seems excessive. Rich Shea seems like a wonderful guy when I've seen his streams and seen him play uh, his vintage shops deck and all that, but uh, that seems a little bit excessive. <laughs> Guess he really doesn't like it, right? Trading post. All right, guys, we're uh, we're gonna play goat tribal. It's a sign. He was upset about the ox being in a chest. Was modern all star with black white tokens for a season. I, look, I don't believe that black white tokens was ever a thing. I think that's a conspiracy that uh, wizards came up with to sell that uh, that modern intro deck. Last one standing. Choose a creature at random, then destroy the rest. Man. All right, well, that's four chests. What do you guys say? We run into another league here. See if we can run it back. Any changes we want to make? I don't. I don't know if we want to make any changes. Maybe like cut a rejection for something. Kind of like everything. Like I don't have any graveyard hate. Maybe I should be playing some Nile spell bombs or something like that. I don't actually own surgicals. I have it in paper. Don't question my being real, sir. <laughs> My being real, sir. <laughs> You're one of the one of the few, one of the few who still uh, still enjoys black white tokens. I would say, but uh, don't. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say that anymore because Greg over here is our uh, is our Esper Esper tokens guy. So the more I talk about bad tokens decks, uh, how bad they are, he will come after me. So. Black White Tokens is going to be my next modern deck, to be honest. Nobody will expect it. Yeah, I mean, honestly, just because no one will expect it doesn't mean it's good. <laughs> you, All right, get, I, maybe I'm the weird one, right? Everyone here uh, everyone here loves Black White Tokens. I'm, I'm, the, uh, I'm the bad guy. I'm just going to stop talking then. We could play some Mardu Pyromancer. We could do that. Um, let's see. How does my Mardu Pyromancer build look right now? Looks pretty fine. I like it. Um, I'm gonna have to probably update the uh, the image here. Oh, that's got the sideboard too. 
So I'll got the sideboard. Alright, how does that look for you guys? Does that look reasonable ish? Now uh, you see some of the sideboard. That's good enough. All right, so we're going to play some Mardu Pyromancer. I'm going to update the uh, the stream name. Give me a uh, give me a few seconds here to make everything look pretty. Jamming modern Mardu Pyromancer. Sweet. Cool. So everything should look uh, good on uh, on your end. Uh, you'll see half a sideboard. Hopefully that's okay. So Mardu Pyromancer. Most of you are probably familiar with me playing this deck. Uh, if you're not, it's a deck that revolves around Faithless Looting uh, and uh, cheap instants and sorceries in order to power out cards like Young Pyromancer as well as Bedlam Reveler, and you get access to some instant win cards, usually like Blood Moon. Uh, you get to play cards like Liliana of the Veil, and Lingering Souls, and K Command, and basically everything the best uh, red-black colors have to offer. So, we're going to go ahead and jump right into a league with Mardu Pyromancer. Anointed Procession in Black White Tokens. What about Anointed Procession in Mardu Pyromancer? Think about that, making double elementals. Double uh, Lingering Souls. That's how that card works, right? I had a nice record with Jeskai Kiki for Electrolyze. I think Electrolyze is one of those cards that, like, is sometimes just the most powerful thing you can be doing in Modern. Like, against all the little creature decks. I think the issue with Electrolyze is like getting enough time to to uh, to really get that value off of it. Sometimes even against the decks where it's good, they play too fast and then it's not that good. But there are definitely situations where Electrolyze is just absolutely insane. I actually I tested out the the Kiki combo in the in Just Guys Sahili when I played it. It was not bad. All right, looks like we uh, got paired for a match. Won the die roll, because we're amazing. This hand seems fine. We have payoff. If I didn't have payoff, this hand might be sketchy, but because we have a payoff spell. Who got that chalice. Looks like we're up against Eldrazi Tron. So this is actually traditionally one of Mardu Pyromancer's just absolutely worst matchups. That'll be it for me. Fun time tonight. Thanks for the stream. Thank you for uh, hanging out with us, MT80. You're awesome. Thanks for coming by. Hope you have a good night. Dreadbore, A. Eh? Well, we know everything our opponent has in hand. We could... Um, I think I'm going to save this Inquisition for one more turn. We could hit a Mattery Shaper next turn. There's his mine. All right, they top decked a, um, a Tron piece. Here I'm just trying to get instants and sorceries in my yard to make Bedlam Reveler more alive. Here comes the Chalice on one. Rip. Oh, uh, Walk and Blow stuff for one. They can equip Basilisk Collar. Oh, that, that's an equip for two. Well, that's a two for one. We know all the four cards in their hand here. We could blow up both of these. Seems like a fine play to me. 
I guess maybe we want them to use up their mana before we commit to that play. Like, maybe equip or something. Yeah, so destroy target artifact, deals damage to any target. Yep, yep. But again, I wanted them to commit some mana first. We could actually save Dreadbore for one of these Reality Smashers. The issue is we'll have to discard. We could also just run out Bedlam Reveler next turn. We could hope to rip a Blood Moon off the top and just win the game that way. Hey Orin, how's it going? New follow. Hey Christopher! Yeah, how's it going man? Thank you for joining the stream. Hope you're having a good night. Opponents may be debating. Maybe they have like a Chalice of the Void they want to play. Maybe they have another Walking Ballista they want to play. We'll take our two for ones where we can. These Reality Smashers are going to be a problem. There is a line here if we draw like a Thought Seize. I'm inclined to run out this Bedlam Reveler earlier rather than later because they could top deck a um, Thought Nuts here at any point. And then what are we doing really? The issue is Dreadbore is one of our few answers to a Resolve Reality Smasher. So if we discard it, puts us in a bit of a rough spot. How are y'all doing tonight? Hope you're uh, doing okay. If you're new to the stream, please consider hitting that follow button in the top right corner. Would help me a lot. Sorry, I lagged out. No problem. All right, so we have a line. We could. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a bit of a risky line, but what what I'm gonna do is. Dreadbore the Reality Smasher, discard the card that I draw for next turn, and then play Bedlam Reveler. It's risky because they could have played Thought Knots here right there, but they did not. Alright, uh... Sweet. And now we refuel. Hope to find another removal spell for this Reality Smasher. Perfect. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. We can uh, Dreadboard discarding Thoughtseize probably. Could also discard this Bolt as well. Our opponent is holding on to cards in hand, so... I am inclined to hold on to this Thoughtseize. Wow, we can just value pitch Lingering Souls? That seems kind of awesome. That was bugged for such a long time that I would get nervous. Yeah, abs I was so nervous doing that right there. You have no idea. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, worst case scenario, our opponent hits Tron. Which one of these cards do we least want to resolve? Probably Ulamog, although all this dust is more castable if they just don't hit Tron. But I think we definitely want to discard this uh, Ulamog. And now we're in a reasonable spot. 
Drazi Temple. Oof. That that casts all his dust, doesn't it? Fair enough, fair enough, opponent. We'll flashback our lingering souls. Say go. Another temple does not let them cast Ugin. Kind of just want to chuck these bolts at their face. Oh, I'll chuck one. Chuck one. K command. Wow. Probably the best draw we could get here. Sweet. That was perfect timing for that K command, wasn't it? Let's go ahead and be mana efficient. Fire off this lightning bolt right away. Blood Moon, eh? Question is how do we get punished here? Another Ulamog, maybe? I think we just want to play Young Pyromancer. Say go. Even the Thought Knots here doesn't kill us. Doesn't doesn't uh, save them. They'd need like exactly Ugin. Mindstone. Mindstone is a redraw. Wow, getting game one against uh, Eldrazi Tron, very rare, very rare for us. All right, they are a Chalice deck. I like Molten Rains in this matchup. They're obviously not as great as uh, like Blood Moon, but they're fine. Wear Tear is also okay. Liliana, it's not quite the grinding matchup though. Don't think we want that. Hazret could be reasonable. I mean, entering explosives does kill walking bullets and chalices, but I think that's a little narrow. It's definitely not the collective brutality matchup. Also, not the uh, not the not the lightning bolt matchup either. Definitely want to find room for these wear tears. Probably just want to trim both of these bolts. I guess like Inquisition is also not the greatest against my opponent's deck, but it does get to uh, get Chalice out of my opponent's hand on the draw. Maybe we can trim like this. We don't want to be flooded on Inquisitions, that's for sure. And Fatal Push is still useful because it kills Thought Not Seers with a uh, fetch land. Ooh, this hand. Yeah, not quite good enough, right? Even though we have some reasonable interaction, it's just not where we want to be exactly. Well, lands and spells. Oh boy. Ah, oh, did we did we not just bottom you? Did we not just bottom you? Opponent's got the basic. They're ready. They're ready for Blood Moon. All right, Dreadboard is not a bad pickup. I guess maybe I should have played my fetch land there. Yeah, we're going to get like turn three smashered, and we're going to cry. I guess turn three smasher is not the worst. We do have Dreadboard value pitch lingering souls. Uh, they get the Eldrazi Temple. Makes sense. That's what's cool about Eldrazi Tron. They can attack from multiple different angles in terms of their mana base. So you can cut them off of Tron. It's what? 
You got nothing for me, opponent? You got nothing? All right, yeah. So this is where we took a little bit more damage than we have to. We could be at 19 instead of 17 here. But now we get, get to at least have something on the board. They could have like a walking ballista, but at least walking ballista trades for my spirits. Wow, what could my opponent have here? I think I just start with an attack. They can play any Eldrazi they want. They can't play any... I guess they can't play Ulamog exactly. Alright, let's lead with a looting here. Thoughtseize is a nice pickup. Probably want to discard a Souls. Maybe a maybe one of the Wear Tears. Kind of like the fourth land. Don't necessarily want to play it. Might just want to keep it around. But all is dust plus dismember. I guess we take the all is dust. Our opponent does have Tron just rolled up there, just casually. Casual Tron. I guess I just flashback souls now. Just go wide. There is the power plant. Let's go ahead and swing out here. We could do a couple things this turn. We could just flashback souls. We could flashback lingering, um, faithless looting as well. I think I want to wait one more turn on the faithless looting. I think I want to get this game over sooner rather than later. All right, there's Tron, but nothing to do with Tron. Great for us. Start with an attack. This member would be an awful trade here, obviously, for my opponent. Bedlam Reveler. Probably been this, been the land. We can Inquisition away the dismember. See what my opponent is playing with. Just a bunch more lands. Ouch. Alright, so they need to rip something good here. Expedition map, uh, that's essentially another land. Rough. The question is, do we play this Bedlam Reveler? I guess Bedlam Reveler beats Ugin. I guess not. I guess Ugin, yeah, I guess Bedlam Reveler does beat Ugin, doesn't it? Could also draw a K command off of it. Oh, wow, it costs four? Yeah, let's go for it. Some solid pickups there. What if my opponent plays like a one of scavenger grounds? My opponent, I think, kept a really bad hand. They kept all his dust, expedition map, dismember, four lands. I guess maybe that gets there. But obviously they just drew lands off the top every single turn after that. They get a Sanctum Ugin. I guess that lets them helps them chain into something here. Right, even an Ulamog doesn't quite save them here. But it looks like maybe that's what they ripped. Yeah, they can Ulamog get Walking Ballista, but they can only pay so much. 
Like they can exile Reveler plus a Spirit, get Walking Ballista, play Walking Ballista, kill a Spirit. They're still at two. We'll have four Flyers. I guess they could exile two Spirits and they can block the Bedlam Reveler. And then they can shoot down one of the Spirits, but then they still take three. So no matter which way they cut it here, I think they're dead. I think my opponent might just be doing the math here. Or they conceded and my game, my computer is uh, is super crashed. They just conceded. Wow, we just 2-0'd Eldrazi Tron? That does not happen every day. Not gonna complain. Not gonna complain, gonna take my win and uh, move on. Rathalos. It's a spooky name. All right, we got we got Blood Moon, got Young Pyromancer. Collective Brutality is also in our action. If we hit a third land, this hand could do stuff. Could do stuff. Put him Mulliganing. See how do they scry? Scry to the top, so probably won't be a non-game here. Basic Mountain, definitely not what we want to see, but we do have Collective Brutality. Sweet, we drew another land. All right, there is an argument for just getting down Young Pyromancer here. We don't know what kind of build our opponent is, but if they're just standard burn, do I want to gain the life? I don't know. I think maybe I'm just supposed to jam. No, but they could have Searing Blaze pretty easily. I don't want to discard both of the Blood Moons. That's the thing. They, cutting them off of their white mana is actually pretty relevant. So I'm just going to just two for one them here. Fetch Mountain, so you have a basic mountain under Blood Moon. That is next level strats there, uh, <laughs> Greg. Next level strats. I think we want to take the uh, Searing Blaze here. That way they have to point a burn spell at Young Pyromancer. Thankfully we have Cake Man to kill an Eidolon off the top. Discard Young Pyro, Kate commanded back. Yeah, we could have done that. That's that's totally fair as well. Alright, Exile Rift Bolt. Drowier, thank you so much for that follow. Really appreciate it. Hope you're enjoying the stream so far. I guess I could have just jammed Blood Moon there, but I also want to... Want to not die. Like, uh, sorry, no, I want to apply pressure. Like, you just lose this matchup if you don't apply pressure. So if they want to trade Rift Ball for a young Pyromancer, I think I'm okay with that. That significantly slows them down. Fetch Planes, Blood Moon, Helix Charm offline. Yeah, this is the non-Planes build. I don't like basic Planes in Marta Pyromancer myself. But we can K-Command uh, Pyromancer back next turn we could also just land blood moon as well kind of depends what our opponent does from here 
First time on the stream, but I love your YouTube channel. Hey, Dro here. Thank you so much for that. Really appreciate it. If if those those of you might not be familiar, I do have a YouTube channel where I play a lot of content, a lot of magic content and stuff, modern mostly. Um, that's what Dro here is referring to. Really appreciate that, Dro here. Really appreciate that. Glad you have been able to enjoy it. Oh, I uh, did I miss sequence things? I don't think so. I think this is fine. Skull crack at us. Lava spike us. All right, so they're just gonna off uh, unload their spells here, basically. I want to get this young pyromancer back, but I also don't want to have it just die to a lightning bolt, but I guess that's okay. It's still a two for one. Bump in the night. Whoa. Come again. This is Mardu burn. Two Mardu decks facing off. Bumping the Knight of their graveyard is better than bumping the Knight in their hand. Swift Spear, sure. So I'm glad we still have the Fatal Push here. I don't think I'm going to block. All right, they're not going to give me the opportunity to block at all. Rough. Can't cast that, unfortunately. It would be nice if we drew like a Manamorphose or something like that. Also, Faithless Looting would, uh, would get us there. Holding up Fatal Push here in case they play something juicier to, to hit. Alright, we'll hold that Bloodstained Mire for future Faithless Lootings. Let's see, my opponent plays a land. Collector Brutality, wow. Let's us deploy this Lingering Souls. Let's us gain some life. Hopefully our opponent's not sitting on a skull crack. That would be kind of rough. Could just be like a lightning bolt. Could be a, a shard volley maybe. Shard volley, yep. Makes sense. Get a lightning helix out of their hand in case they for some reason play a basic planes in their deck. And now we just have to hope to dodge some burn spells, right? Our opponent is hellbent. We're favored from this position if we draw some reasonable things. All right, I'm not going to play around a uh, top deck burn creature because we just need to end this game ASAP. And we need to find a faithless looting ASAP. Alright, there's a goblin guide. So I guess we're holding back these spirits now. Alright, well, maybe we're not. Maybe we're just casting that lightning bolt. And again, holding on to these lands for Faithless Looting. I play one Plains and Burn, but now they're cut off fetches. They're not going to get it if they have one. I mean, they could, yeah, they could top deck it, sure, but... Yeah, I, I've run into some of the, uh, the Burn lists with one Plains. They're really annoying. Alright, opponent attacks. Sweet. 
get that sweet sweet value hopefully they don't follow up here with like an Eidolon young peasy Now if we hit a Faithless Looting, maybe we can start going off. Maybe if we're lucky to make it a few more turns. Shard Volley. Does that say just uh, sacrifice a land? Yeah, sacrifice any land. So it's not just a mountain. Alright, well, I guess I'm glad that that was just a one for one. I mean, not uh, one damage. All right, we'll take that other Searing Blaze out of my opponent's hand. Keep swinging. Opponent's bound to draw some land sometime, right? <laughs> oh, boy, not like this. Not like this. All right, so I think at this point I will play around uh, like a top deck Goblin Guide. One, two, three, four, five, six. So Reveler already costs two. All right. So we'll just double block in next turn. My god, this is probably some of the worst luck I've had in a long time. It's bound to happen sometime. <laughs> really? Really? That's five lands in a row for me and like my opponent just drawing straight gas. <sighs> All right, in this matchup we bring in Kambal. The extra brutality. Hazaret is a clock. Dreadboar is a little slow. Can probably cut that. Uh, seeing as they're Mardu, I kind of like keeping in both of these blood moons but also blood moon with Kimball is kinda awkward probably wanna trim these thought seizes bring in the brutality, bring in Hazaret do I wanna bring in Molten Rains against Burn? seems not bad where Terra kills an Eidolon also if they're playing that black enchantment but Dreadboar is just an extra removal spell, probably fine Let's make sure there's nothing in our deck that we really don't want. I think everything here is fine. Yeah, sometimes when you don't draw Faithless Looting, this deck feels bad. But also, like, we play 20 lands. What just happened to us doesn't happen every game. Doesn't even ha doesn't even necessarily happen once a league, you know. That probably happens to me once every couple leagues, where I just flood out like that without eluding. All right, well we have a fatal push. Hands kind of weak, but I think it's a keep. Thing is, we're building towards a clock. All right, opponent's gonna bump in the night us maybe. Opponent considering whether they want to maybe suspend a rift bolt here, bump in the night us, goblin guide.
All right, Monster Swift Spirit is. Just go ahead and uh, cut to the chase. All right, Liliana is not a bad draw at all. If our opponent follows up with an idol on here, we'll have a we got a pretty solid curve actually. Liliana made things pretty reasonable for us. We'll see what our opponent wants to follow up with here. I think an Eidolon might be okay for us. We'll just go ahead and play uh, Liliana down tick. It would be nice if we can start up ticking Liliana, but if they have to two for one to, to kill Liliana, I think that also puts us in a uh, pretty good spot. I think the best uh, sequence for them would be, um, my opponent is just like, I guess they don't have basics in their deck. Not that Wooded Foothills would get a relevant one. Interesting, our opponent. Just gonna say go. Doesn't deploy a creature. That means Liliana goes and ticks up right away. Sweet, we can even discard this excess reveler to it, to her. Maybe we can actually start hitting spells out of my opponent's hand. A single Boris Charm would clear Liliana, but then it's uh then that's a that is a one for one trade, right? But it does save us life. So one for one trades aren't the worst if it's saving us life. I guess we'll discard Reveler. Yeah, Boris Charm. Oh, Helix Me. Interesting. Why would they do that before we choose our discards? That's an interesting uh Black Leaf Cliffs. Best card in modern, right guys? Alright, Swift Spear. Could go ahead and clear the Liliana. If they have a burn spell to go with it. Alright, looks like they're just going face. They're just saying, I don't care about you and your Liliana. Spend Rift Bolt. K command. So we could uh, play Hazaret here. Oh man, we have a lot of choices. I really like this turn. Let's let's think about how we might want to play it. Option number one, which is the clearer one, is down tick, make him sack monastery um, Swiss spear. Another option would be up tick Liliana, discard Reveler, play Hazaret, swing. Uh, put our opponent to 13. Our opponent would activate Rift Bolt. Take us to 11. Monastery Swift Rear could put us down to 9. We could uptick, discard Bedlam Reveler, K Command, get it back, make them discard. That doesn't seem winning to me either. I think we do need to get this Monastery Swift Spear off the board as soon as possible. Question is... So I think this is what I'm going to do actually. Well... Yeah, target player... This is kind of spewing, but I think we're just going to lean on Hazaret to win the game rather than Bedlam Reveler. And Liliana's going to eat up their hand for the rest of the game, essentially. They discarded a shard volley. We go ahead and uptick one more time. Discard another Reveler. Alright, getting cards out of my opponent's hand. Another Rift Bolt. Yeah, I really like our position here. I think we just want to fetch, get a Blood Crypt. 
We already have our double black spell out in case we draw Blood Moon. I guess if we draw Cumball, I think that's the only position where I'd be like in a really awkward spot. Like I, I don't actually know what the right play would be. But here is actually really nice. We'll just value pitch this uh, Faithless Looting. Play Hazard and Swing. But I discarded a Searing Blood. And now we've got a clock. We've got a Lily on six. I'm just going to go face, skull crack, sure. Bump in the night, put us to four, all right. Um, we'll probably ult Lily here, separate their lands, or we could just collect a brutality. I kind of just like collect a brutality. We could collect a brutality and ult Lily. Put us up to six. Can put them down to one land. Then we have lethal next turn if they don't draw a blocker. Because we can uh, pitch the card we draw to Hazaret and then also swing. So we've set up lethal for next turn while cutting us our, op our opponent off from having any reasonable draws here. I guess if they played Dismember, that would be um, an out. Looks like they don't have Dismember. Alright, we'll take it to game three. On the draw, I'm going to cut a Blood Moon just as more uh, removal, more interaction with what our opponent's doing. I don't want to have to like lose to an early Eidolon, so the more interaction I have for that, the better. And I want to thank you, every single one of you guys for joining me here for this stream. Really appreciate it. Oh, this hand is, uh, it's tempting, right? Let's go ahead and bottom that dreadboard. We already got one. Alright, Goblin Guide's gonna get in quite a bit of damage here, unfortunately. But Collector Brutality was a nice pickup. Nice, nice pickup. My opponent might just spew here. If they take away Skull Crack mana, then we can have uh freedom to escalate this collector brutality all the way. Lingering Soul to enter the revealed zone. Two Lingering Souls to, to bin to collector brutality doesn't seem too bad either. So I find it follows up with another creature here. Ooh, bump in the night? Sure. So now we're not, we know we're not getting skull cracked. Yeah, brutality is, is insane in this matchup, for sure. So Boris Charm deals us the most damage, while these ones only deal us three each. But Bump of the Night is efficient. I think we still want to take Boros Charm. Next turn we can land a Young Pyromancer, try to accelerate our clock just a little bit. If our opponent top decks a land, they can unload both of their spells here. I think an Inquisition would be a really nice pickup for us. Alright, Bedlam Reveler. 
I guess I've seen worse. Opponent, I guess, committed to the Lightning Helix line here. Searing Blood? Oh, God. Oh, my God. That was an insane draw. I guess that would have happened even if we'd played Lingering Souls. And now they're just going to go ahead and play out their hand. Put us to three. Let me just get Mardu burnt. Sure. I guess if we draw Blood Moon, I'm not going to want to fetch. Collective Brutality, wow. What an insane, insane draw there. I think we just got to get ourselves out of, uh, out of range. Would have been nice last turn. Sweet, our opponent just hit a land. The issue is here, like, I don't want to fetch myself down to three. I think fetching myself down to four might be okay. We'll say we're, we're dead to Boros Charm, but... But it does have double bump in the night in the yard, so... At this point, lands and spells are good. Maybe my opponent has like an Eidolon here. They're thinking they have an Eidolon. That's a, you slam the Eidolon. I think I just start flashing back uh, Lingering Souls. It's the fastest clock. I can't think of a single dead card my opponent has, so there's there's got to be something coming at us here at end step. Wow, nothing. What dead card could they possibly have that's not a land that they wouldn't play? Why are they holding lands? Maybe they're slow rolling us just cuz? Maybe they have like a Kozilex return or something and then we're just super dead? Yeah, like a sweeper effect is the only thing I can really think of that could punish us for making these plays. But at least now we put them dead next turn. Go ahead and play the Black Leaf Cliffs, say go. Maybe they're like waiting on the Lightning Helix. Could be sandbagging land in case of K Command. Yeah, if, but if they're sandbagging land, I mean, that just seems like such a bad play with bumping the Knights in their yard. And they got us. Fair enough. They needed two burn spells to get there. I just think sandbagging land with, when you have bump in the knights in the graveyard is probably wrong. Especially because they'll, they'll just play anything they have anyways. Deflecting palm? Good point, Carnies. Carn, Carnsees, AT817. Yeah, it could be deflecting palm. Fair enough. I think they would have uh, fired off the Flecting Palm at some point though. But maybe they just never found the right opportunity. Games against Burn are just sometimes so demoralizing, honestly. But this seems like a fine hand.
Not the best Mardu hands, but... Putting in Mulligans to 6. We'll see how they choose to, uh, to scry. Brutality is so amazing in that matchup. Yeah, it is so amazing, but it's not magic. It doesn't, it doesn't fix everything. It's powerful, but the thing is, if you don't have a clock, they have inevitability. Alright, looks like this might be Jund. We have a pretty good Jund matchup. Oh, this is uh, Bridge Vine. Stitchers, Stitchers, Stitchers Vine. This matchup is actually pretty rough. I think we'll just go ahead and uh, fetch up a Blood Crypt here. No Avenger Vine. I think there's an argument to holding up a fetch land in case we want to crack it for fatal push, but nah, nah, nah. This is not dredge. This is um, this is the, the uh, Vengevine Stitcher Supplier deck with uh, Bridge from Below and uh, Greater Gargadon. So here, I think we want to just fatal push the Viscera Seer. This will force them to crack now this stitcher supplier if they want to I got two grave crawlers in the yard that's not bad is blood gas a zombie now it's a vampire spirit bridge vine ah that thing yeah yeah bridge vine my hope is my opponent does not have a second land all right they scry to the bottom they'll sack viscera seer to itself as well they can scry again. Maybe we can go over the top here with some Lingering Souls. This is going to be a pretty bad matchup. We're going to rely pretty heavily on our... Uh, let's see, they scry to the bottom again. Alright, they do have a land. So here comes at least one Bloodgast. Do they have like a Faithless Looting to follow up? No Faithless Looting. So, Lingering Souls buys us a little bit of time. All right, there's the faithful looting. I'm gonna start get their deck going here. Probably discard a bridge from below from their hand. Maybe a vengevine as well. So double vengevine. All right, that's scary. All right, insolent neonate. At least it's only one creature this turn. Oh, they sacked it right away. Maybe to hit another land. Oh boy. Ooh, they got the zero mana creatures in their deck. Yeah, they got Hanger Backwalker. Here comes Double Vengevine. Jeez. All right. Um, it's a game. So if we hit some Lightning Bolts, that would be nice. So they had the land for the Blood Gast. Oh, they have Double Blood Gast in the yard now. Jeez. Whoops. Almost just threw my turn away there. <sighs> Four lands, Manamorphos. We can't quite do everything we want to do. We can't quite cast Reveler this turn. Go ahead and uh, add a black mana, add a red mana. Another Reveler. Not great. Not great. Thoughtseize is really bad against my opponent, but at least we get a Hanger Back Walker. Oh, I didn't actually need to fetch that basic swamp, did I? One, two, three. Yeah, I think we're just super dead here. All right, they'll flashback Faithless Looting. Discard double bridge from below. Oh god. 
And we hit the other reveler. Jeez. Jeez. Alright, if my opponent is savvy, they'll bring in nature's claims to fight over our ley lines. Kind of like Hazard here. Don't really like Thoughtseize very much. I guess Thoughtseize can hit a greater Gargadon though on the play. I don't know. Seems kind of loose. Liliana the Veil also seems kind of loose. Discard spells in general just doesn't doesn't seem like where we want to be against this matchup. Kimball gains us life, blocks on the ground. Leon of the Veil kills their X ones. Collective brutality is just a really it's just life gain basically against my opponent. I guess Inquisition on the play hits Nature's Claim to protect Leyline. So actually, I think that that's reasonable. If we do draw our ley lines, we definitely want to be able to protect them with discard spells on the play. It's going to be one of those matchups where we're going to try to mulligan towards a uh, ley line of the void. All right, that'll do. That'll do. Bottom that. Play that. Say okay. Now we just need to hit a second land, and we might be in business. Let's see if we can rip a nature's claim out of my opponent's hand, maybe a greater Gargadon, maybe a faithless looting, something relevant. I think I want to make them get rid of the faithless looting. Alright, there comes insul Insolent Neonate, sure. Alright, these are the risks of keeping hands like these, obviously. If my opponent just plays a land, plays a Hangerback Walker. Alright, they just drew a Faithless Looting, so they'll probably hit their land here. Right, Exiles double bridge from below. They can just hard cast their grave crawler now as well. Basic swamp. Well, no second land. Lose to one ones. Yep, that's how this. That that's exactly how this is gonna go. And now, like walking ballista is also just gonna kill any potential. Well, I guess they go for the hanger back. That also makes sense. They can just get walking ballista next turn bolt bolt is not the worst at least let's us hanging back from generating a ton of thopters yeah absolutely that is the uh, the idea here I think Walking Ballista for one, yeah. I think we still want to kill the hanger back, although maybe we just want to preserve our life total for a little bit longer. So I guess I'll just kill the grave crawler. We need more removal spells anyways. And if they take <laughs> oh no. Not like this. Yeah, fetching around Blood Moon, they don't have claims. Yeah, they might not have claims in their deck. I mean, I feel like... I 
I guess we'll play the looting. We could hit like uh <laughs> could hit nothing at all. Alright, alright. I was uh feel bad. Good side choice, I like it, just got mana hosed. Nice guy opponent trying to make me feel better. <laughs> Too bad, I, d I don't feel better. How are y'all doing tonight? Are you enjoying the Mardu, Mardu Pyromancer shenanigans going on right now? Had some bad beats the past couple matches, but let's see if we can bounce back. Come back with that 3-2. Might just not be the knight for uh, Mardu. Maybe people are like playing decks they think are good against Jun that just won the open. But I, I, honestly, I don't think people make conscious choices like that. At least not the masses. I think most people just play the decks that they want to play. It's just revenge for beating Eldrazi Tron, right? <laughs> we were able to beat our one of our worst matchups, 2-0, round one, and then like then this happens to us. Mardu decks I always I watch always seem to struggle to find lands. Uh, dude, I've been there. That's like me every game. Sand is perfect. Well, not perfect, but it's uh, close to it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Another burn deck. Faith this looting off the top. Not bad. I think here we'll just uh, hold up Bolt for this goblin guy and hope we don't get Eidolon next turn. Double Mountain. Alright. If they had Nidalon, they probably would have played it pre-combat. Although maybe they're just trying to get us here. Lingering Souls, sure. Oh, Goblins! Goblins is beatable. We can beat Goblins. Hey, yeah, see you later, Alex. Thank you for joining the stream today. Fetch Shock, send a message. <laughs> Fetch Shock, Thoughtseize. Seems like the play. If we can generate a bunch of 1-1s here, I think this young Pyromancer is going to be a must answer for my opponent, so I'm just going to say, hey, have the Lightning Bolt. If you don't, then we're going to town. All right, Mog War Marshal. We can beat Mog War Marshals. Sweet, we even find the land. Um, I like Binning Souls and Marsh Flats. I think I actually want to Thought Seize my opponent here. They could easily have like a three mana Lord in hand. That will make life really difficult for us. Alright, so they have the Goblin Chieftain, Goblin Rabble Master, Goblin War Chief, and Reckless Bushwhacker. I think we just take the, the Chieftain. Now we got some solid blockers. But it needs a third land to really get going here. That is an aggressive attack for my opponent. Whoops, I meant to uh, to fetch end of turn there. That's okay. I think we're just going to flash back Lingering Souls this turn anyways. We could leave up K-Command for um, Goblin Rabble Master. We can let them generate like a single token, but then we can answer it with either Collector Brutality or even Liliana. We might be able to convert this Liliana into something useful. Let's see if they go and slam the Rabble Master here. Goblin War Chief. Guess that's okay too. 
Goblin spells cost one less to cast. I feel like I probably want to kill that. Let's you. I might have been the Lily instead of the Souls there and fetched Foundry. Let's you get a board a lot wider against all the one ones. Yeah, I thought about that after I made the play. I think you're right there. Question is, do we want to bin the Lily now to uh, to brutality, gain some life? Seems fine. Alternatively, I could have played the Lily and upticked, but we definitely have to get rid of this uh, this guy right now, or else they'll just spit out their whole hand. Um, and now we might even be able to just get aggressive in the air. We have one, two, three, four instant sorceries in the yard. I'm actually going to play this land. All right, there's a rabble master. You can kill that with K command next turn. Let's go ahead and uh, block, block. Bolt is a nice, nice pickup here. Alright, I think we're starting to turn the corner. Who wins, spirits or goblins? That is a good question. I think sp spirits probably. Spirits can go wide pretty well, as well. Um, and they have really big bodies. They have also have like rattle chains to protect from. Uh... All right, another bushwhacker. So, a uh, rabble master. Excuse me. So, just go ahead and uh, before anything happens. see we got one two three four five six reveler for two don't mind if I do opponent not scooping here good for them good for them this blood moon huh I kind of want to dread bore the goblin, just swing in with the young pyromancer too. It's probably greedy, right? Maybe I'm just supposed to like swing with the uh... and then like flashback faithless looting. Yeah, that's probably more correct. Go ahead and add. Uh, I guess we can add red white. If we can, if we find a lingering souls, we probably want to just cast lingering souls. But if we don't find lingering souls, we can go ahead and uh, just flashback looting. And we found lingering souls. Fantastic. <laughs> yep. I'll do it. That'll do it, opponent. Pack it in. So, Engineer Explosive seems pretty okay here. Collection Brutality also seems nice. Liliana. Hazard is uh, both a clock and a, a nice blocker. We can consider it. Ball could be useful, gain some life. Decent blocker. 
Definitely want to cut the Blood Moons first. Then probably want to cut the Thought Seizes. Bring in that. What do you guys think? Do you think this uh, configuration looks okay? Looks okay to me. Liliana the Veil is not fantastic in this matchup, but Kambal because of blocks. The question is, is Kambal better than Lily? Goblin seems a lot less strong than Elves nowadays. Yeah, Elves has actually been really powerful the last few times I've played it. I honestly think it's a very underplayed deck. And especially if Humans is rising again in the meta, get rid of Manamorphos Dead Air. Um, I kind of like Manamorphos. kind of like it. Helps us avoid fetching Shocking to play Lingering Souls on Curve. And like, Lily just seems so bad in this matchup. Huh? And I like, uh, I like Manamorphos especially for playing the Cambals, so. I think I'm going to, I'm going to keep that, this setup here. We might run into some graveyard hate here. I've, I know they run cards like Tormod's Crypt. Uh, this hand is greedy, so we'll mulligan it. This hand is pretty bad, but it seems like it's doing less for you than Manamorphos. Yeah, yeah, agreed. All right, bolt off the top one time. All right. We could have a nice turn three here if we're not dead by then. We kind of needed a discard spell on this turn to sort of clear the way. All right, Mog War Marshal. That doesn't, I guess that, that beats in for three here. Next turn we can resolve Young Pyromancer and then the turn after we can Manamorphos into Lingering Souls. Another land is not what we want to see. But if our opponent once again does not have a third land, could be okay. But I'm just going to consider paying the echo cost here. They do not. <laughs> now hopefully they don't have something that gives their uh, creatures plus one plus one in haste. Okay, well Goblin Rabble Master. That is super scary. Alright. We're going to get schmacked here. Still don't think we can block. I think we just have to take six. Alright, another Lingering Souls. I'm kind of regretting not uh, not fetching a Sacred Foundry on turn one. We'd be at ten life, but... Let's add white. And, uh, red, I guess. And now we have a board. We can block. We can block a little bit. Ram and ruins. That's, <laughs> that is honestly very real. Our opponent's curring out on us, though. Let's Goblin Grenade targeting me. Oh Lord. Are we dead? Don't think we're dead. Unless they just have Bolt. Even so, just bolt, okay, maybe I was supposed to double block, oh well, now things are, things are looking up for us, right? Things are looking great. Brutality probably just the sickest draw. Now 
Next turn we can uh, Reveler for full mana for, for three, for, for five mana. Fetch a basic uh, mountain probably. Uh-oh, uh-oh, my opponent is, yep, that's a Goblin Grenade. Now Ramnap Ruins is lethal. Can't even fetch. God. Alright, well, I guess we're just uh, doing that then. Hoping to fade a couple turns. All right, oh boy. Did my opponent draw well there? Were those good draws? Yeah, I think those were good draws. R.I.P. R.I.P. Go ahead and run it back. I don't think there's anything any changes we can make here? I think our deck is configured pretty well to beat this matchup. Not gonna do it with hands like these, though. I guess this is fine. Let's go ahead and bottom a land. Just lead on Black Leap Cliffs. In case we wanna uh, bolt like a turn one Goblin Guide. Alright, this time I'm going to make the play where I get the Sacred Foundry tapped. Can still hold up a Lightning Bolt as well. Goblin Instigator. That is kind of sweet. We could get really screwed over if our opponent just has a uh, Goblin Bushwhacker next turn. K Command, huh? Don't think that's worth shocking for. I think we just want to play it slowish. Maybe if they have like a Lord effect here, we can bolt the Lord. If they have a Rabble Master, we can kill the Rabble Master. But they're doing the thing that I was hoping they wouldn't do, which is one mana spell into Bushwhacker. Yep. So we will take four here. I think actually I just I just K command uh, during combat. Again, we, we want to not get hit by a lord. Trading a Collector Brutality for a 1-1 one, one doesn't seem fantastic. Well, if they're making the same play they did last time, then... Yep, sure. We'll go to 5. Alright, if they have a Goblin Grenade, we can at least make them discard it. They had a Goblin Rabble Master. And next turn we can Reveler. 
Just hope our opponent bricks a little bit. Swing us down to six. All right. I wouldn't play my land there because I'm probably not going to uh, want to use a fetch land anyways. If I did draw it, I'm not even guaranteed to draw like a, a, a castable spell. Hope my opponent doesn't rip the goods here. Opponent did not rip the goods, so it seems. Gonna want to start trying to actually end this game. If my opponent had a few less cards in hand, K commanding on their draw step might be reasonable, but. If my opponent attacks here. See what our opponent is going to discard. We'll be able to block with our elemental. Stinky Blinky, thank you so much for the follow. Sorry I missed that. Thank you, thank you. Us staying at 6 life is actually really relevant against Goblin Grenade. Uh, nothing to Dreadbore on this board, so we'll just go ahead and uh, play a Reveler. We'll do that pre-combat in case we draw a spell to trigger Prowess. Whoa, 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 wrong spell. All right, um, don't think we want to trigger prowess here. Just hold up K command for like a goblin rabble master or something like that. We could draw step, uh, make him discard, but they're holding on to a card, probably a land. I'm going to hold this blood crypt for uh, faithless looting. Goblin instigator, sure. Uh, I kind of want to, in response, and then I should have lethal next turn, even if they have something like a lightning bolt in their hand. Yeah. Sweet. <sighs> Crawling our way back here to a three and two, hopefully. I'm exhausted though, so this is probably gonna be the last match of the night. Hope you guys have been enjoying the stream so far. Thank you all for hanging out with me tonight. Really appreciate it. We are a pretty new stream. Uh, I do have a YouTube channel. I've been doing YouTube for a little bit over a year now. Uh, you can check out the links below. Should be in like the uh, little info that I have under the, uh, the the videos here. If you want to check that out, I do have more Mardu Pyromancer. I play blue decks like uh, Blue Way Control, Jeskai Control. Um, we played Grixis the other night. I, I upload all of my. Uh, VODs on there as well, so if you miss a stream you can uh, watch it on YouTube as well. And then I there's some content that I put out there that I don't necessarily play with on stream. So this is like our only this is our like our fourth or fifth stream we've done so far. So we're, again we're pretty new. But every follow helps. So if you're uh watching the stream and you're enjoying it right now, uh please do consider hitting that follow button. It every every follow helps. Every follow helps. I'm out. Good luck match five. Thanks Jork. Thank you for so much for hanging out with us. For the whole night so far. 
have a have a good rest of your day or night wherever you are in the world we've been mulliganing a lot all right i guess that's a keep just gonna get a basic mountain here Don't quite know what, what what we're up against. Kind of like the idea of Blood Moon uh, in the dark. Kind of like the idea of K Command as well. Well, Basic Island makes me like all of that a lot less. But uh, Blood Moon could still be okay against Basic Island. Oh, I just, well, uh, Blood Moon could be great here, actually. Fantastic. Looks like we're up against Blue-White Control here. An early Blood Moon definitely does a lot of work against my opponent. And a threat also does a lot of work. Spelson here. All right, you got us. That was uh, that was pretty sweet for my opponent there. Well, what we can do here. My opponent's end step, we can get back young Pyromancer. Ooh, there's the second island. Now they have Snapcaster uh, Snare Up. Jace, okay. We can clear a Jace with double. All right, now we can't. See what my opponent wants to do. Um, they put a card on the bottom. So I kind of want to build towards this Reveler, which is why I'm playing out my lands and not holding it for like Faithless Looting. Although Faithless Looting there might be okay as well. Alright, opponent Brainstorms. Do I want to respond to that? Maybe I should have gotten the Reveler back while they were tapped out. I guess if they like negate Coligan's command, we still uh, we're still not in too rough of a position. Hopefully, our opponent doesn't find the basic planes. Well, they just found the basic island, so that was one reason not to make the play that we did. So now, even if they bounce the uh, pyromancer in response. With like a cryptic command, we still get a, a token. Oh, I guess I guess not. This this was kind of a loose play. I guess I'm playing a bit fast and loose right now. They're not guaranteed to have cryptic command in their hand, but I have to imagine they probably do. And if they have cryptic here. Interesting. Logic knot for some number. All right, now I feel kind of silly. But at least we might be able to clear this Jace. I'm going to start with an attack here, all at Jace. See if we can clear that. Yep, I figured they might have this. Sure. I guess this definitely buys them another, another brainstorm. 
Yeah, I think I, I should have just played at sorcery speed. Played a bit loose with that K command. And then Jace would have been dead because he would be at one. They're going for another brainstorm. The idea is that they find no white mana. Search for his Kanta. Well, I guess we want to flashback looting before we attack in case they have another Snapcaster Mage. I think I want to flashback souls now, once again, in case they want to block with a Snapcaster Mage. I think I want to send everything at Jace. They could also have a click to block. Alright, but no white mana puts us in a reasonable spot. But it probably wants to bin whatever they had on top of their deck because they brainstormed the last turn. So that's what that's the kind of the cool thing you can do with Search for Iskanta. Alright, we'll start with an all-out attack here. See how my opponent wants to tap out of some of their blue mana. They do not. If we run out our Bedlam Reveler 1, 2, 3. He does cost the full 5 here. I don't want to give my opponent an opportunity to just cast Cryptic Command, but they didn't cast Cryptic Command a couple turns ago. So did they draw the Cryptic Command? They haven't been manipulating their deck all that much. I'm going to go for it. Sweet. Resolved. All right. I think this might put us in a position to win next turn. But it needs to find some white mana pretty soon. Otherwise, they're pretty deep in the uh, in the hole. So this is 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 with prowess. So what do you got for me, opponent? Show me your hand. Do you have the cryptic command here? Yeah, looks like they have the cryptic. Tap all, draw a card. Interesting. This gives us oh, wow. a lot of white cards. Guess we just take a path to exile. They could have bounced the Blood Moon too. Interesting that they didn't. They could have bounced the Blood Moon and then like a Terminus or Supreme Verdict is uh, a live draw for them. I wouldn't have overextended the way that I did though if, uh, if that was the case. And I think we got the concession from our opponent here. Sweet. Blood Moon doing some serious work that game. On the play. Uh, in this matchup, I like to bring in Liliana the Last Hope. I like an extra brutality. Uh, Wear Tear is really useful against Attention Sphere and um, Rest in Peace. Hazard's an extra threat, although they are the uh, Terminus Path to Exile deck, so Hazard might not be that amazing. And I do enjoy some Molten Reigns against control decks. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking about it. I don't actually think I want uh, Hazaret. In this matchup, I like to cut the pushes. Even though they hit Colonnades, it's, um, it's a little loose in my opinion. Keeping that in. This is the matchup for Dreadbore, so I'm going to keep Dreadbore. 
I'm actually going to cut the Manamorphose. I don't think I want the air. I think I just want density. Density of things to do. Threat density is what I mean by that. Uh, collective Brutality. Wear Tear. Wear Tear. Liliana. I think I want to cut two of the bolts. Maybe just one wear and tear. I mean, it hits a Scanta, it also hits Wrist and Peace. It's a lot of solid things, actually. I don't know. We want a lot of the cards that we have here. Maybe uh, Cutting Reveler seems so loose as well. Yeah, maybe just one. Maybe trim a Bolt as well. Bolt not, not at its best in this matchup, but sometimes you do want a little bit of closing power. It's possible you're just supposed to cut all the Bolts and have Collective Brutality be your reach. Oh man, come on, come on. All right, I guess that's fine. Uh, bottom of land. Inquisi Inquisition, Inquisition, Blood Moon. Opponent's got the fetches here, so that's good for them. Probably want to take the Logic Knot. You have double search for his Kanta, so. I right, imagine they're going to get a basic planes here. Yeah, and this is what I mean by like, Bolt is just not the best here. I kind of want to take their Path to Exile. Spell Snare hits a lot of our things, but Path to Exile can hit their own creatures to help them fight through a Blood Moon. Let's see, alright, they kept a card on top. They play the Field of Ruin. Just gonna go for a main phase. We'll say okay. I'll just add a red. Why not? Just get a mountain. Oh, yeah, they still have spell snare in hand. I don't know why I just did that. Kinda want another red source here, which is why I'm uh Fetching like this. So now search for his Kanta is just like a scry one every turn. Oh wow, they put Serum Visions to the bottom. Interesting. Alright, that's a Jace. Plus the third island, so. Seems mighty relevant. Alright, so it looks like we might not even have to Dreadbore, we could just bolt it away. So Jace plus Escanta lets them bin some of the bad cards they have, like the second Escanta, and draw more, towards more live stuff. This matchup's definitely gonna be definitely gonna be a grind. It's gonna be a matter if my opponent can find uh counter magic for the threats that we end up drawing. That is whoa, 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 whoa there. We found the perfect turn here to make use of this bolt as well as dodge the spell snare that is in my opponent's hand. And they put a field rune to the bottom. Or to the graveyard, I mean. Hmm, we know they're probably sitting on Spell Snare right now. So how good is this Faithless Looting? I mean, is this py Pyromancer? Wow. 
Wow. So the second search for Escanta is still probably somewhere in their uh, in their hand right now, which I find interesting. I don't think they had an opportunity to shuffle it away. They found the second planes. That means Terminus is live. I think the last two cards in their hand are search for Escanta plus spell snare. And what we have going here is not the fastest clock. I guess we should have flashbacked that looting. Kind of hesitant to discard that dread war there, but I think we're okay in terms of beating a planeswalker. Now we're gonna get like Teferi now. Yep, well, sounds about right. I guess they're just gonna discard their Iskanta here. Yeah. So now last card in their hand is Spell Snare plus Unknown. We can hopefully clear to fairy here though. Interesting. They did show us condemn. One, two, three, four, five. I think it's worthwhile to Inquisition in case they have exactly condemn. Interesting. They're gonna opt. Hopefully they don't find a terminus here. That would be quite insane but at least they do this now before we get our reveler down all right Elspeth Sun's champion oh boy no that that's a card that's gonna be hard to kill without a dread boar unless we can find a thought seize right here no thought seize but We'll do our best to grind through this Elspeth. Let's see if my opponent bends a card off the top of their deck. They don't. They keep on top. Interesting. All right, there is the Elspeth Sun's champion. Hmm. We have a couple of different plays we can make here. I think first and foremost, we want to send everybody at Elspeth. So Reveler costs two mana. Now they didn't bend the card. Another Teferi. God. Yeah, another. In the case of another Teferi, I don't think it's worth it to uh, to play this Molten Rain. Yeah. So this is why we play Double Dreadbore right now instead of like the one Dreadbore, one Terminate. But we did bend. A dread bore the turn before uh, things got rough. Do we still have any lootings in the yard? We have one looting. We have two lootings. Okay. But I had some pretty good, pretty good draws, I would say. Once the miracles deck gets going, though, this is uh, this is one of the one of the ways. This is one of the positions where it's really hard to beat them.
I'm gonna grind it out, see if we can draw some dread boars. I think we just wanna lead on looting though. So discard, discard. Thoughtsy's showing up a little bit late here. They have a path to exile. So still purge the blood moon. All right. Get a Snapcaster Mage out of my opponent's hand. That is... Oh. Haha. <laughs> That's not a land anymore. Now we have to be worried about that Celestial Colonnade in the air. I think we just have to clear the Elspeth here. Teferi's gonna draw them cards, but Elspeth actually wins them the game and stops us from winning the game. So next turn we can clear Elspeth. They can actually flip his Kanta here. And then I think we're in a really rough spot. Yeah, they have a Skanta Teferi going. I'm only not conceding here because it is possible my opponent bricks and we find another Molten Rain or a Blood Moon and start shutting our opponent down, but it is highly unlikely. Rev up Colonnade. Swing for six. I think we just have to take it. If they have a cryptic command here, tap draw. All right, we're going to a game three. Um, I'm gonna run to the bathroom real quick. But I will be right back for you folks to finish up this game three in match five. All right, folks, thank you for sticking around here with me. 
appreciated. Let's go ahead and uh, finish up this this league. Yeah, I guess that's a hand. That's a hand we're going to keep. I guess we'll get a Sacred Foundry with this. We still have the option of getting a basic Swamp with this Bloodstained Mire down the road. Basic Island to Serum Visions, sure. My opponent did not mulligan. Let's see how they want to uh, scry. Could inform our decision on what we want to take with uh, Collector Brutality. One bottom, one top. Meh. Guess they will be drawing a card that they want. Hmm, Young Pyromancer. Kind of want to just jam Pyromancer. a threat it applies pressure wow opponent doesn't even have mana for uh yeah this is gonna be dirty oh we're gonna do him dirty all right cut cut off their access to white mana swing for two Next turn we'll be able to Brutality as well, plus Looting. Alright, Opt. So at least they had something to do with their mana. Let's see how they want to Scry. Scry to the bottom, always a good sign for us, they're digging for something. Or they don't see something they need on the top. Another Serum Visions, it could be Land Light. This might also just be the best sequence for their, for their spells, so you never know. If they play like another colonnade and then they scry a terminus to the top, we could be in rough shape. Definitely not a not a lock to win this game in any shape or form, but I think we do have a pretty nice start here. Apply solid pressure. We disrupted our opponent with molten rain. A blood moon off the top would be quite nice if our opponent does not have a basic planes uh, available to them. The thing with the Miracles deck is they're never really out of it. As you saw, if they just get up to a certain number of lands, they, they just go off. Um, I think here I want to start with a Faithless Looting. Wow. Uh, I think we want to bin a land. Bin a Brutality. Maybe we want to bin a Pyromancer. Maybe we want to bin both lands. Kind of want to just bin both lands. See if we can pick apart something here. Wow. Let's see, how did they scry last turn? Put two cards on top. It's kind of rough. Detention Sphere is also kind of rough. I kind of want to take the Path to Exile here. You can take the Terminus later down the road. They could flash in Snapcaster Mage and cast Opt, which is why I am not attacking with Young Pyromancer. Don't really want to trade my Young Pyromancer for a Snapcaster Mage at this point. I 
let's just make life a little bit harder for them to do everything that they want. At the same time, we're getting instant sorceries into the graveyard. One, two, three, four, we'll have. Probably want to hit our Sacred Foundry. If they want to, I guess they could Logic Knot us here, if, if that's the card they drew. Maybe I wanted to collect a Brutality pre-combat. That way I would know that I can attack with uh, Young Pyromancer. Maybe I missed out on two points of damage here. Sure. Yeah, I guess I guess I missed out on on damage. But at least they have uh, no white mana this turn. Ah. So they can field of ruin. Yeah, our opponent had a pretty pretty solid sequence here. We'll go ahead and get uh, red red source. Look at the basic planes. Yeah, they were able to scry a terminus to the top with the serum visions uh, from the previous turn. Liliana does just get hit by the tension sphere. But so does like everything we play. I think we know the exact contents of the of my opponent's hand currently. So Detention Sphere might just be the best option for them. Of course, if they top deck Jace here, I think. I'm going to feel pretty dumb for discarding that Dreadbore, but discarding Dreadbore makes uh, Bedlam Reveler cheaper. Yep. So we traded for Detention Sphere. Thankfully, we have Wear Tears in our deck if we draw some white mana or the Wear Tears themselves. Interesting. I believe we still know the last three cards in my opponent's hand currently. Snapcaster Mage is indeed a problem. So we got one, two, three, four, five. We could Reveler for three here. Our opponent might have Snap Logic Knot up later, so I'm actually okay with casting Reveler right now. It's not the best. But we actually, those are some fine pickups. We still have a looting in the yard. If our opponent wants to go snap path on our Bedlam Reveler, interesting. Is my knowledge of the information, maybe they don't have this Field of Ruin anymore. Yeah, maybe maybe the Field of Ruin was wrong. But it scries to the bottom, draws a card. Yeah, I guess they, they only had one Field of Ruin. Maybe I just forgot to take it off. Also means they don't might not even have a another land drop ready to go. I guess that makes sense. All right, well maybe they do have the field of ruin. Maybe they use their snapcaster mage already. I don't know. I think we start with Inquisition. Gives us a prowess trigger in case we need it. Snapcaster Mage, Path to Exile maybe, could be targeting just, alright, Path to Exile, clears our Bedlam Reveler, alright, oh, they don't have Terminus, did I take Terminus, oh, did, I'm confused, I am genuinely confused. Well, I guess we attack. Sure. Get another mountain. I guess I haven't been keeping track of my opponent's hand uh, well enough. Shame on me.
We could hard cast Lingering Souls next turn. We could also just bin it for, you know, value. Kind of want to bin this. I think just going wide with Lingering Souls could be good if we dodge a draw step or two for my opponent. We still have a Sacred Foundry. Oh no, we've... Okay, so good thing we checked. We actually binned both Sacred Foundries. So we definitely want to discard the Lingering Souls. And I guess we might as well just discard this uh, this land. Although I don't think we've made a land drop this turn. So we could technically flashback Souls right away if we discard something else. Kind of want to discard the Molten Rain. They have a lot of lands lined up. Although that, that would be land 6. Let's just go ahead and flashback souls right now. And we cross our fingers, hope our opponent does not top deck something like a Jace, Elspeth, Detention Sphere, Cryptic Command. But it plays the Flooded Strand. Tax with Snapcaster. We're going to take it. Wow, Bedlam Reveler. Best draw in the deck. Alright, if our opponent did not draw a Cryptic Command right here, then we are golden. Sweet. Um, well, don't act, don't actually have any white sources, so I'm gonna hold on to this land for faithless looting next turn. So hopefully our opponent just bricked last turn. Then playing out that molten rain means we actually have a target. I'm just gonna start with an attack. My opponent's probably gonna have to chump block with Snapcaster Mage. So before we make any decisions, we can go ahead and uh, do this. Now it's a matter of do we want to Molten Rain the Fortress? Do we want to just flashback Faithless Looting? I'm kinda, I kinda just want to flashback Faithless Looting. We could save this Inquisition to play around Condemn next turn. I think I'm just going to be mana efficient, get this Molten Rain out of my hand. Would put them to one if it resolves. Means that fetch land is offline means they're effectively at 5 mana and they have far less outs at 5 mana than they do um, at 6 mana. Could be like a supreme verdict here. Jace. Well, Jace Brainstorm. They tapped out of their white mana though, so what could they possibly find here? I'm gonna let my opponent think about that themselves and that was exhausting. Playing against Miracles is exhausting. They're a really powerful deck. But we finished up with a 3-2 with a here. Thank, thank goodness. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the deck that we just played. That was Mardu Pyromancer. Through a modern competitive league. And we went 3-2. So we got about 22 viewers here right now. Um, thank you all for joining me tonight. Unfortunately, this is going to be the end of the stream. Uh, we just finished up two leagues. Uh, we, we played first with Four Color Death Shadow. We went four and one. Uh, deck was sweet. Uh, did a lot of powerful things. Some of our opponents rage quit. That's always fun. 
And then we went on to Marta Pyromancer, which is a deck I'm more comfortable with personally. Um, and we were able to go three and two. Now, if you're going to ask me to name back all the matchups we played, I honestly cannot remember them off the top of my head. Uh, it's, it's quite a haze. It's been quite a long night. It's, it's about to be one o'clock in the morning for me here. Uh, but I'm happy that we came out of that with a three and two. If you're watching at YouTube, uh, I do have a YouTube channel, so for any of you viewers right now and you're interested in seeing more of my content, go ahead and check out my YouTube channel. It's in the link uh, in uh, it's in a link in my the description of my channel below where it says things like welcome and how to reach me. Uh, go ahead and check those out. Um, yeah, you can see more content of a bunch of different decks. Um, yeah, also go ahead and uh, follow me on Twitter. That will help you know when I go live. It's also a nice way to reach me. I post about all my YouTube content over there. So please go ahead if that's your uh, preferred uh, social media outlet, uh, go ahead and um, give me a follow there. I'm a very, very friendly person. Flank Attack, thanks for the stream. Yeah, yeah, no problem, Richard. Thank you for sticking around for this long. I'm surprised you're still here. I guess you're just kind of uh, uh, lurking in the back there. But I, I appreciate you uh, you watching and, and spending your time here with me. It's it's honestly very appreciated and very kind of you. Um, but yeah, that's my Twitter. That's my YouTube channel. Uh, go ahead and hit that follow button here on Twitch to be notified when I go live. Uh, we are still a baby stream. We're working on making our quality better, uh, both in terms of the, the layout of the stream and, and everything like that. So uh, please uh, please do consider hitting that follow button. I would highly, highly appreciate it. Uh, it, it helps it helps a lot uh, for uh, for a new streamer like me. Okay, uh, and I think I owe you guys a victory chest, right? We, we crawled back to that three and two. So let's go ahead and open up one of these chesties. See if we get anything good. Last night we opened a Bedlam Reveler. Can we open another one? <laughs> Oracle's Attendance. All damage that would be dealt to target creature this turn. But, all right, that's trash. Uh, complete trash. No worries. No harm done. Uh, we had fun there, right? Uh, but that's going to be the end of my stream. Hopefully you guys at YouTube are going to enjoy the stream as well. Um, yeah, we, we, uh, we, we had some fun today. And we cashed all of our leagues. Can't say that every day, right? Cannot say that every day. Uh, let's go ahead and see who we might want to uh, to host. Let's see who's on right now. At the end of every stream, it's common courtesy to to give out a host. Let's see if there's any any little streamers playing any interactive decks. That's what we're uh, we're gonna hope to to host here. Preferably playing modern. Do we got anyone? Legacy Storm. Z Magic. Z Magic is a cool guy, but he's playing Matt MTG Arena right now, and that's not cool. That is not cool. Um, why not? I don't know. They're playing like draft. I guess um, Brad Carpenter. We'll go ahead and uh, give Brad Carpenter a host here. Brad Brumos and Rage. Looks like he's playing Hooglin's, uh Blue Red Wizards. That's going to be a pretty sweet deck. So go ahead and uh, check that out. I uh, just want to say one last thank you to every single one of you guys. Really appreciate uh, every single one of you that, that hung out with me tonight. Uh, had a lot of fun. Hope you did too. And uh, thank you all for giving me your time. With that said, have a great, great night. At least it's night for me. Have a great rest of your day if you're just starting your day, wherever you are in the world. And I'll see you all later. that other spelling and grammar checkers just can't.